Governor Ron DeSantis, who is, of course, also running for president as a Republican in the 2024 presidential primary, did an interview with Megyn Kelly on The Megyn Kelly Show and finally got confronted. Even though Megyn Kelly is herself a right winger, she actually confronted him about the ideological hypocrisy, I guess you could call it, when it comes to the purported principles of conservatives uh, juxtaposed against the actions DeSantis takes, uh, big government, you could call it, actions against private companies that disagree with his political views and how that just doesn't seem to be coherent within the framework we've been told conservatives abide by. And finally, because DeSantis was confronted, we got to see what it looks like whenever he tries to defend this attack on woke and Disney and now Bud Light and He's threatening suing Bud Light over being boycotted, but he supported the boycott over them being too woke. And so he's going to punish them for losing money and uh, not falling through with their duty to the shareholders based on a boycott that he supported because of Bud Light going woke. And then, of course, everything he's been caught up in with Disney. And that is him trying to leverage his power, his government against companies he disagrees with politically, which is not a small government thing to do. And now that he tried to answer for that, and it wasn't just a softball interview the whole time, he imploded. And this is a complete uh, failure to answer this question on his part. So I'll show you this first clip and then we have a second as well. Much as the base is angry at these woke corporations, and I get it, and I know you get it, aren't you doing the very thing to these companies that conservatives are mad at left-wing leaders for doing, using government to punish citizens for political wrong think. No, not at all. So taking Anheuser Bush, I mean, we're not punishing them. They departed from business practices by indulging in social activism. That has caused a huge problem for their company and their, and their stock price has gone down. Well, our pension fund in Florida holds uh, Anheuser Bush InBev stock. So it's actually hurt teachers, it's hurt cops, it hurts firefighters who depend. We looked at the specifics in a past segment. You can find it covering his announcement of thinking about legal action against Bud Light for essentially being too woke and sponsoring a trans woman. That was the justification for a massive boycott and now possibly legal action. It's pretty wild and unheard of, but it's a very small impact on the portfolio he's referencing for the state of Florida. And on that pension fund. And so didn't it's you support the boycott against them? No, I did, but that's just as a personal thing. But I mean, we didn't have like the, the, the state government, you know, necessarily, you know, putting power about it. But as, a, as an American, I said, I'm not, I'm not doing Anheuser, but I'm not doing Bud Light. <laughs> I love that. It gives away the whole game. We are mad at Anheuser-Busch InBev because they departed from proper business practices and the pension fund, the Florida State Pension Fund is now suffering, again, a very small amount, but suffering because of that, because they hold uh, InBev stock. But then Megyn Kelly asks, didn't you support the boycott? So you participated in the financial damage that then you're wanting to take action over. That's pretty ridiculous, sir. Then here's a follow-up question from Megyn Kelly. So why can't Disney oppose your law? They can. They and why can. can't they promote they, they this can. agenda in their viewpoint they can. without being punished by the state? They're not being punished. We're just simply removing a special benefits that they have had that really weren't They were worse off when it was done than they were before they, before they spoke out. Well, no. I mean, it was, first of all, we didn't actually do anything to Disney. There was a government that had been in place that they had effectively corrupted, which was not the way it was supposed to be, by, by the way, if you look at how this started in 68. So we changed the governing structure, which really didn't even impact them directly. They're just indirectly, they don't like it because, you know, they don't get to call the shots anymore. But we, they are not entitled to corporate welfare. You do not have a constitutional right to corporate welfare. I know welfare. that, but it's not and about an nothing... entitlement. It's not about entitlement. If I go to my boss and I say, I, uh, you sexually harassed me, and then suddenly he reduces my salary from 200000 to 100000 that's retaliation. I am worse off. And it's not a defense to say, well, everybody else at the company was getting 100000 You've reduced my circumstances. You've, you've punished me. No, but, but that, that's an that's a employer-employee relationship. I think that that's much different. But, you, but this is but, the state but taking away a benefit. But, but, your, but your position is basically that Florida should be forced to subsidize Disney regardless 
of how it's going to use those subsidies so that they can weaponize the subsidies they get from the state and turn it against state policy. Why would we want to subsidize that behavior? Well, Why here, should Florida thing, taxpayers I get it, have to I get underwrite it. that? But I don't want a President Gavin Newsom doing this to conservative companies or companies who have a more conservative viewpoint. Well, here's what I would say. I don't think there's any arrangement in America that mirrored the arrangement Disney had in Florida. For so the funny thing is whenever he thought it was politically advantageous, he did tout his actions as a retaliation of sorts. He said, because they're going woke, we are doing this. Now he realizes this does kind of contradict what I pretend to stand for as a small government conservative. And so, no, actually, this is just something that I've been meaning to do for a long time. And the woke thing was just a good chance of reminder that they shouldn't have special benefits and this, that, and the other thing. But see, you doing that, taking away something that they had and you didn't have a problem with before in response to them going woke in your mind, having political views and expressing them that you were not okay with, that is you punishing them. That is, as Megyn Kelly pointed out, if you have a salary, even if it seems like you're getting a too generous salary, if you came out against your boss and said that they had sexually harassed you and then that's when all of a sudden he has a realization that your salary is too high then clearly he is punishing you for doing that thing same thing here with ron DeSantis. and as you could tell he got so flustered and doesn't exactly know what's going on and i think the reason he's backing off of proudly saying he's fighting back against the woke company directly is because of information like this a recent poll was done by i think it was uh the new york times and uh, in consultation with uh, one of the polling agencies, and it asked, which of these two Republicans would you be more likely to support in a Republican primary for president? Number one is a candidate who promises to fight corporations that promote woke left ideology. The second is a candidate who says that the government should stay out of deciding what corporations can support. And among Republican voters, you had 38% say, yes, I want my elected leaders to fight back against woke ideology with corporations and 52 percent said no i want them to stay out of what corporations can and can't support don't punish them when they speak out against policies that uh you support or that you push for so even republican primary voters or likely republican primary voters aren't exactly down with this type of policy and so DeSantis is now trying to say, nah, I mean, yeah, I didn't like the woke and so they shouldn't be treated preferentially, but I only had that realization once they started going woke. And it is him leveraging his power, as I said, in his position as governor to try to punish them for speaking out against legislation that he supported. And this is yet another reminder of the very real situation with, yes, people across the board, lots of people violate their own principles, but we see it very often with Republican leaders where will engage with their principle honestly thinking naively that they mean it how often have i sat around and argued as to why the philosophy of just small government generally just the federal bu uh, budget spending needs to be as small as possible is way oversimplified in some places the government does a good job some places it doesn't take it out of the bad place put it into the good places and uh design it to benefit the citizens that it should serve to benefit as best as possible and then the second that it's not advantageous or they get a little whim to go the opposite direction, they will. And so what were all those conversations for? Clearly, it wasn't about that. It was about the particular policy you were saying you had a principle against, but it wasn't. It was just the particular policy. And an example is when talking about universal health care, sometimes I, I can't even get to a conversation about the specifics of uh, different healthcare policies, country by country, and how countries with universal health care fare better on all these different metrics than the United States. And that's why we should implement a similar universal health care program. And every developed country has a universal health care program, and the United States doesn't. And all of that sometimes can't even be said because they said, sorry, I, I just can't even on principle support such a large government program. And uh, because I'm a small government conservative, and that drives my ideology. And so it's kind of a cop out from good policy discussions about could the government do this effectively based on studies, based on research or based on examples from other places around the globe. And then here instantly it's ah, never mind. I don't actually have that philosophy 
or I don't actually believe that the government shouldn't punish political views. It's uh, the constant violation of principles, which makes it really hard to believe people when they tell you they have a principle. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership. That's LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership, and there's a link in the description.